When I was nine, we'd moved from Princeton to New York. I hated New York. That was our apartment. It was on the third floor. It was only four blocks from school, Buckley. There was a good art teacher there. We all had to carve these uh, wooden square plaque things that went up in the hallway. I'd be curious to see if mine's still there. Got it. And of course, I made a pallet with brushes sticking out. I was 11, I think. I got the idea when I was there. Please come back again. Th uh, that I might be an artist, that I might become a painter. And I started doing drawings with a hard pencil. And they weren't very good and everything, but my mother, for some birthday, 11th or 12th birthday, gave me this big set of pastels. 65 years ago. Haha. <laughs> okay. Sort of smells. And then I started doing faces. I was riding the subway and looking at people. So I'd come home. I would just, on the floor, I'd just make them up. I'd just start. They would come to me. And they were, you know, they were OK. They were. So from, the, from that moment on, I kind of knew that I could do that. I could do that. To this day, I love riding the subway. It's just so infinitely varied and fascinating. I went to boarding school in the northwestern corner of Connecticut right after the war. I guess I went in the fall of 46. My two older brothers had both been to South Kent. It was a very small school, about 118, 120. Boys, all boys, of course. No girls anywhere. And it was very rigorous and very New England school. And it was sort of a cross between a, a monastery and a reform school. You know, we got up, a rising bell was 6.30, and then everybody did their job, had job assembly. This is what school was like when I was here, pretty much. There was a farm that was part of it, and, and these were potato fields and every fall. We harvested potatoes, filled big gunny sacks, burlap bags with potatoes, and then we'd store them in the root cellar, and then the rest of the year we'd eat the potatoes and ran on a shoestring. Just as an example, we were only allowed to drink milk once a day, and that was at supper, and that was after having a glass of water. You cleaned your plate. Waste was not done. The boys did all the work, did all the, the kitchen work and the yard work and the housework, everything. If you did, you know, if you did something bad, like you walked on sixth form grass, or you left the light on, and you got, you had to sign your name up on the hour board, hours you had to work off, raking leaves or shoveling snow, sweeping a walk. People ran away. South Kent was, was duty, discipline, um, responsibility, all oh, very heavy, very, very heavy. And it was, you know, totally, total repression, dep deprivation, and consequently, all one could think about would be naked women. Plus, I, w I had terrific sexual fantasies about all the faculty wives. This was my room, and I was hoping that a nude girl would come down the hallway and open my door and say, I've been waiting for you all my life. I was so deprived and, and suppressed for, you know, new, no contact, whatever, except with faculty wives, with women. I just was, became obsessed with painting, sexual paintings and that sort of thing. Yeah, I think, I think it's all 
pretty much due to South Kent School. <laughs> South Kent it was started by a man named Samuel Slater Bartlett, but known to us students as the old man. And my uncle, Uncle Dick Kyler, my uncle was the senior master. He was in charge of the academic side. Sam Bartlett, he was a born leader. If he said, over the top boys, we would go. And he was a man of very strong convictions. And we all saw that and we all admired it and wanted to be that way. He always stuck to his principles. I mean, totally. No compromising. The values were pure New England and pure Christian. It certainly got into me. You know, I was here for five years, very formative years, from the age of about, well, 12 to 17. I graduated when I was 17. You know, chapel was an integral part of the school. Uh, there was communion every morning and chapel every day in the evening. And, uh, and the old man would read the prayers. Sam Bartlett was, in a, in a large sense, my surrogate father because uh, my own father was pretty much of an absentee father, not around and didn't want to be around. And Sam Bartlett was very much around and he was just a very strong influence in my life. Although when he took me into his study to tell me that he was making me head prefect, smoking on his pipe. Um, Paul, you're, you're a different breed of cat, you know. <laughs> and by that, what he really meant was he had no idea what, was, what I was like because I was, I was tending already towards being an artist, which was anathema to the old man. The whole idea was to teach kids sound moral values and to, to take responsibility. And it did that. It sure as hell did that. This school uh, gave me a, a, a permanently bad conscience, <laughs> I guess. so strange to be here. I was just starting my fifth form year when my mother died. That was a huge thing that happened while I was here. 